Shalom from Jerusalem. My name is Albert Wexler. I am the director of Jerusalem Prayer Breakfast, and we are here in our offices in Jerusalem together with Knesset member Matan Kahana. Shalom, Matan. Shalom, Albert. Hello. I'm so happy you came. You were really busy this morning. You were uh, at the Defense Ministry today for a special briefing. Yeah, special briefing with the Minister of Defense, and uh, it was very interesting. Of course, I can't uh, speak about it too much, but... Uh, but tell us as much as you can, what is, uh, what's the picture? How do we see the, the war? The picture is that uh, a week ago, uh, the IDF started the, the ground campaign. And uh, we are doing it uh, to make the terrorists go out from their tunnels and uh, shelters and uh, so we can find them and uh, fight them and kill them. And uh, after what they did to us in the 7th of October, uh, for us, it's a die or a do war, do or die war, and uh, we'll do everything to win them. It's a very difficult task because they're sitting right under the hospitals. Actually, uh, it's terrible to think about it, but uh, they located all their uh, headquarters uh, under the hospitals in Gaza Strip, and uh, in the, under the main uh, hospital in Gaza, Shifa. the Shifa Hospital, yeah. Uh, all, all the commanders are hiding uh, below this uh, hospital and uh, because they know that uh, we will not attack uh, this hospital. But uh, after what they did for us in the 7th of October, uh, I, I recommend them not to uh, be so sure that uh, we will not hit them also there. Now there was some talk about uh, French and British uh, ships coming with the hospitals that the people will be evacuated, the sick will be evacuated. Uh, the truth is that the Hamas uh, monsters uh, are not letting their people to leave the area of the fighting. And uh, they are using them cynically as a human shi uh, shield. And uh, we gave a general warning that uh, everyone should evacuate from, the, from Gaza uh, because uh, we have a terrible war against them. And, uh, but uh, the Hamas not letting the civilians of uh, Gaza to leave uh, the city. It is horrible and uh, we have also 241 hostages that we know of, maybe right there in these tunnels. Uh, you know what they did uh, for us uh, this uh, Black Shabbat uh, months ago, it's a terrible thing, the, 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 this uh, great biggest massacre that the Jewish people suffered uh, from the day of the uh, Holocaust. Uh, they came from Gaza Strip and uh, to rape our women, uh, to burn alive our kids uh, and behead them. And uh, uh, they, uh, they kidnapped 242 people from Israel, among them almost 40 uh, kids. Among them uh, uh, kids under the age of 10. Uh, for example, there is a, a, a young, uh, young girl that, uh, in the age of uh, 5 that they killed both of her parents and she is a hostage in the uh, Gaza Strip. They are monsters, and uh, for us it's a do-or-die war. It is um, really uh, shocking to think what atrocities they committed and uh, how, how they behave. And isn't it strange that, you know, let's, let's speak about the, the political world. President Biden, uh, Secretary of State Blinken, State Blinken, we had uh, President Macron, we had Hungarian President uh, Katalin Novak, we had Czech Prime Minister, a British Prime Minister. They all came on the solidarity it's visit. by Israel. But yeah. at the same time, at the same time, United Nations cannot, cannot condemn Hamas. It's, un it's unbelievable. Uh, to support Hamas is support murderers. Support Hamas is support rapists. Uh, to support Hamas is to support uh, monsters who came to burn alive people in Israel. This is the, what it means to support Hamas. And people around the world don't understand it. You know, uh, what they, are, they are challenging uh, our uh, Western values. And it's not a war against Israel. It's a war against all our way of life, all the Western way of life. And Israel is only on the front line of this, uh, of this struggle, of this war. But uh, as they uh, intend to do it, not only to Israel, they want to do it all over the world. And the uh, people who support them don't understand what they are supporting. Because, uh, of course, President Biden's visit, it was the first time ever that a sitting president visited Israel during a war. It really gave a, a moral boost to Israel. It really came 
as a support? Uh, United States support uh, to Israel is very important for us, uh, especially, uh, of course, the moral support and uh, all the other uh, support. Uh, you know, they deliver the uh, uh, submarine here and, uh, and a, a lot of uh, military equipment, and it's very important uh, for us. Uh, in this region, it's, uh, there is no place for weak. And I think that the United States is showing everyone what it means to be a friend of the United States. So it's, it's also good to the United States. At the same time, uh, two days ago, Jordan now declared that uh, they consider the expulsion of Palestinians from their territory as a declaration of war. Not only that they are not willing to take any Palestinian Arabs to their territory, they say if they come, it's a war. You know, it shows that uh, the Arab people maybe is not one people, and the Muslims are not uh, uh, are not uh, brothers. Because uh, you know, if something will happen to Jews all around the world, the first thing that Israel will do is to uh, call them uh, back home to Israel. And there is no Arab country that uh, have uh, that declares that they want to uh, have a shelter, to, to be a shelter to the to these refugees. Uh, but, you know, Israel, uh, we are the most moral army in all over the world. And we will never aim our targets on uh, civilians in purpose. But every uh, people in Gaza Strip must understand that now uh, we will not have the opportunity to fight like uh, the previous times that we uh, warned every people before. Knock, knock on the roof and yeah. uh, phone calls uh, to tell them, uh, be aware that you are living in the headquarters of Hamas and uh, move away because we are going to uh, bomb it. Now we don't have this uh, luxus, and uh, we took off our gloves, and uh, we gave a general uh, warning, and uh, we are fighting now. And every person in Gaza who, know, who find himself uh, near a uh, Hamas activist or Hamas infrastructure must understand that he's putting in life in danger. The same with Turkey. I mean, uh, I mean it's a NATO country, and they, they are taking a very uh, hostile position against Israel. They are supporting murderers, they are supporting rapists, they are supporting people who came to burn people alive. This is the meaning of the support they are giving Hamas. Now, our friends uh, all over the world have seen also very massive pro-Hamas demonstrations. I mean, isn't it a warning, warning for them? I mean, that they have such people living in their countries that are supportive of Hamas. The radical Islamics, uh, Islamists uh, want to uh, control all the world. And uh, for them, Israel is only the first step, the first step, the preview. And the uh, people around the world uh, should wake up and understand what is happening here. Now, right uh, you know, before this uh, horrible October 7, um, Prime Minister Netanyahu was in UN uh, talking about normalizations with Saudi Arabia, he made some very, uh, for me, uh, scary almost uh, declarations of new Middle East, you know, bringing peace with the Arab world, uh, being at the cusp of a major breakthrough. And um, I started to feel very uncomfortable because, you know, you heard these uh, speeches from Rabin, from Sharon, and... Uh, Israel is a country that seek for peace. We want peace. We want to live in peace with all our neighbors, but we understand, especially after the 7th of October, that in this neighborhood, if you want peace, you should be the strongest country in the area. And that, that's what Israel is. We are the strongest country in the area. Uh, they, try, they, they succeed to uh, surprise us, but they will never succeed to, uh, to win us. And uh, if we want peace with uh, all the Arab countries around us, uh, the first and the most important thing is that they will realize and know that they will never be able to beat us. It is, it is important. And uh, thinking back to Saudi Arabia, I mean, I think that the deal has to do with Saudi oil and gas coming through Israel to Europe, leaving Russia, Iran, and their gas price and oil price mm -hmm. uncompetitive with Saudis. And so there was some speculation saying that this was the reason why they launched it. 
And this was the reason that the Hamas launched this attack? Well, this was something that they gave green light Because to. Uh, they get the green light from uh, Iran. So, yeah. uh, of course, Iran is the, is the baddest country in all this region, and uh, they are responsible for everything that's uh, happening here. And uh, I believe that one day we will, uh, Iran will feel our strength. Do also. you think, do you think uh, American presence here, the aircraft carriers and the submarines, um, will hold Iran and Lebanon, or will they still enter the war? What's your, what's your uh, estimate? It's hard to give uh, an estimate because uh, you know that before the 7th of October, we estimated that Hamas uh, don't want to open a war, but uh, we found out that uh, Hamas, for the Hamas, is more important to kill Jews than bring a good life for Muslims. And uh, maybe, and we, we must uh, assume that Iran is also uh, sharing the same values like the Hamas. And uh, maybe for them, uh, they don't care about their population. The only thing that uh, they care of is killing Jews. So uh, we should uh, reduce uh, our uh, thinking uh, what, uh, what uh, our enemies are thinking and uh, to, uh, to concentrate about what they, are ca what they are capable to do. I see. Now, on 6th of November, there was an initiative uh, about the National Day of Prayer. There was 20 Knesset members that supported this initiative from Yehuda Glick. I think you were one of those who signed this declaration. And there was a big uh, prayer meeting in the Great Synagogue mm -hmm. in Jerusalem on the, th on the 6th. Uh, do you think we should have a more massive um, declaration coming from the Israeli government that, you know, it's a time to pray? Government are not dealing with uh, this kind of, uh, of uh, things, but uh, I think that this uh, should come from uh, bottom up, okay, and uh, from people like you, uh, from our friends who, who will call uh, f to people all around the world to pray for Israel, to pray for the free world, uh, to pray uh, of the def to the defeat of the bad and evil. Uh, mm. Because, you know, in, in the American history, for example, I mean, of course, Israeli history, we start from the Bible. Josephat, Hiskiahu, uh, Ezra, Nehemiah, um, Daniel, they all prayed in the time of crisis. Of course, we are praying every day. And, and they declared a prayer. Also, uh, you know, President Washington and, and all the presidents, uh, you know, after him and then Eisenhower and, and then they had a day of prayer. Just yesterday we had a very uh, big uh, prayer in the Western Wall and uh, with the chief rabbinate and... Uh, oh, they did it? Yeah, yeah Benny Gantz was there and uh, I'm, all, I'm always uh, for praying. This is so important because you are in such a key position because uh, this disunity we saw mm -hmm. before the uh, October 7 attack um, you were like a key person calling from both sides yeah. to come back to you, be united because you're, you come from religious background. But I'm, then I'm in a very unique position because, as you said, I'm, I'm, I'm coming from a religious background and I'm now in a, some kind of a secular uh, party, not secular, uh, uh, secular party. And, uh, you know, I'm in the centralist party, and, but uh, my thoughts are in the right side of the political map. And I realize that uh, if we will continue to fight one uh, against another, uh, one against another here in Israel, uh, uh, we will be in a very bad position as we see today. So uh, something like four or five months ago, I, I called for unity government. And uh, I'm happy that we have it, but I'm so sorry that we have it only after what happened months ago. Of course, house divided, kingdom divided will fall. Yeah, yeah. And we have to really watch out that uh, this would not happen. So maybe we, happen. we should ask our friends all around the world to pray for uh, Israel unity, in, to inside unity. It's a marathon, isn't it, now, what is ahead of us? It's not a short... No, war. It's won't, it's, it won't be short because, uh, you know, when the United States declare a war against, a, a against uh, Al-Qaeda, you know how much time it took them? Almost 10 years. 10 years of fighting against Al-Qaeda until they uh, could uh, say that they won. Uh, we are fighting uh, the most evil regime that exists now. And uh, it's not only a statehood re regime, it's, uh, it's also an idea. And we are fighting an idea. And uh, we, must, uh, we must fight them against, uh, until uh, they, uh, we will finish them.
and uh, we will uh, they will not have any uh, arm uh, they will not have any um, capable to war to harm us mm -hmm. now some final words about our hostages what do our friends that are watching us all over the world what can they do to get our hostages out i mean there's of course prayer yeah of course but then they can talk to their congressmen. They can talk to their congressmen, uh, to the leaders, to demonstrate, uh, to, to take a side, to take the side of Israel and, uh, and uh, to call the barbaric uh, regime that uh, kidnapped our uh, daughter and son and women and uh, old peoples to let them go. Uh, that way. We have uh, something prepared if you want to write to us, Israel.empowered at gmail.com, uh, we will send you a set of posters about these kidnapped people. I mean, children, more than 30 children, you said. More, uh, almost 40. 40 children, yeah. elderly, some of them Holocaust survivors, women. I mean, you cannot imagine what they went through. We need them back. And I want to ask you to pray for them. I mean, think of this, more than a month now in a dungeon, haven't seen sunlight haven't had a fresh breath of air. I mean, this is constant fear that they have to feel because they don't know whether they will be killed or whether they will be freed. I mean, I can understand the, the emotional and mental torment that their, uh, uh, you know, cap captors uh, in, from Hamas are, are doing for them. I mean, it's a psychological war. So we need you to pray for them, that they would keep sound mind, that they would have their hope ready, that we will be able to get to them right on time. Now, Matan, there are also all kinds of technological things. I mean, there was talking about robots and, and, and things sending in them to fight in the tunnels. Can you say anything well, about uh, this? I prefer not to speak about uh, our, uh, the way we, that we're going to fight, uh, to fight against Hamas. Uh, it's better to not, not to speak about it, but uh, we have a lot of uh, surprise for them. So we'll see it in the news, what happened. I do hope so. So thank you so much for tuning in today. And uh, remember that we're here to give answers for our allies every day, one o'clock Israel time. And those who pray for the peace of Jerusalem will prosper. Shalom from thank Jerusalem. You. Shalom, shalom.